Hey you guys, Guy Stevens here. I thought I would do another video because someone recently asked me an interesting question and I thought that that might be an interesting exercise to make. Um, the question was about the Dewey Decimal System and that's a system that is used to classify books in a library. And it's made up kind of like you can see here. You have a certain class, that class has divisions and that division has different sections. So for instance, you will have the number 500, natural sciences and mathematics. And in that you will have mathematics and in mathematics you will have geometry. And then there are even more subsections or I don't know how these things are called. And you can make, um, uh, you can make all kinds of lists of all kinds of different classes, divisions and sections. And so the question is, how can we make this in FileMaker, this kind of uh, list that has different levels? And more so, if you want to um, enter a book in your database, how can you assign that book to a certain class? and then to a certain division, but ideally when you've selected a class, you only want to see the divisions that are in that class. And then if you've selected a division, you only want to see the sections that are in that division, etc., etc. Now this goes way down. These are like one, two, three, four, five, six levels. I think I will do it a little bit simpler. Let's use three levels because it's all, the rest is all just the same. So let's see how we can get something like this made in FileMaker. So let's open up FileMaker, let's make a new file. So file new solution, let's call this one Dewey Decimal. And then I get a bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna use this one right now. So let's get that one out of the way for just a second. Let's give this one a nice size. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I can see that I've got uh, a layout already created for me. Let's go to File Manage Database. And I actually don't want this one. So let's go to Tables. And let's delete this one and let's say also remove occurrences in of these tables in the graph. Cool, so I can start with the clean slate. Now I've got classes, divisions and sections. So I'm going to start with a class first and then I'm going to give this one a field ID. That's going to be a number field and I'm, as always I'm going to set this one to auto enter a serial number. That way we've got a unique serial number to work with. That's kind of good. Then I will have a um, class number which is going to be a number and I'm going to have a class name which is going to be a text. So I'm going to on my Mac command T or just select the type text here. I'm going to create this one so I've got two number fields and a text field. Let's hit OK. Let's go to this class one and this Dewey Decimal is still here. So I'm going to go to File Manage Layouts and delete this Dewey Decimal because I don't want it. And now I have a clean slate. So let's exit my layout. Let's make a new record. And we could say a class number of let's say 500. That would be Natural Sciences. Cool, so I could start making classes like this. That's kind of good and now I can make a whole bunch of classes. Okay, so what more do we need? File Manage Database. We have our classes table. Our divisions table is going to be pretty similar, so I'm going to copy and paste. Now you won't have these if you don't have FileMaker Pro Advanced, so you're going to have to make them manually. This one is going to be for my divisions. So I'm going to change the name here. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to say instead of class number, this is division number, oops, division number. And this is of course going to be division name. So let's change these guys up. Okay, let's look at my second one that I've got now. So I've got divisions. Now I can make a new record. I can make a division. Let's say for instance, I want to do, um, um, let's see, what do we have? 410 is linguistics. Great. So 410 linguistics is actually a division that is um, supposed to be related to a certain class. So we could do that right now from here. So we can go to file manage database and we can just add to this uh, table add a class ID FK. That was going to be a number. So let's command N and set this to the type number and then let's add this one here to this field. Let's go into layout mode, take this field, grab two and let's just drag it up here. Class IDFK, I want to create a label but I'm just going to call this one class, oops, and then we can start working with this one. This is going to be a drop down 
So I'm going to set this to a drop down because I want to be able to select my class from a list. I don't have any drop downs yet, so let's make a new one and let's say classes. I'm not going to use custom values because I'm going to use custom. Uh, I'm going to use values from a field. This is going to be from the class table, and I want to put an ID in this field, but I also want to display values from a second field, namely, well, a number or a name. I would actually like to add both of them, but that's not possible. So let's deal with that in a second. Let's choose the class name for now. I want to include all the values, but I only want to show the values from the second field because I don't need to see that ID. That ID is not that important for me to see. So let's exit our layout and let's see. I've got natural sciences. That's good, but I can't really see is that part of this 400 group or not. I'm not seeing uh, any numbers in there. So let's go and fix that problem first. In my um, classes table, I've got the number and the class name separate, which is good. I don't want to put these things together in one field to start with. I always want to keep my data as separate as I can. And then it's very easy afterwards to kind of put them together. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go to file manage database and we're going to make a field that combines these two fields together. That's going to be like a calculation. So I'm going to name this one C underscore and I'm going to go for full name. That's going to be my name here. Now I could choose what I want to do with this one. I can turn this into a text field. I could normally speaking because it's a calculation, you would say I'm going to use a calculation field, but a calculation has to calculate. And um, in this case, we're going to combine two fields that are in the same table and our calculation field is also going to be in the same table. So you could just as easily use the text field. You can create this one and then set up an auto enter calculation because that way as soon as a number and a name are filled in this calculation will be filled in and it will simply be stored as a text that means it never has to recalculate and as soon as you change either one of these fields then this calculation will be updated so i think that's the best way to go in this case when you're when all of your fields are in the same table we're going to use a calculated um calculation here and we're going to combine the class number and we're going to say we're going to add something else we're going to add a space and maybe even a hyphen and another space and then we're going to uh, add the class name and this is all going to result in a text so a class number and class name that looks kind of good and then what do we have here we have calculated value and we this is a funky little checkbox here i don't really know what to do with this yet so let's just go and try this thing out and see what it does now i always like to put my original tables in table view so let's do that and then let's modify and add that full name field that we just created so now it's here but a problem is that we're seeing that it's not filled in nothing is in here and the reason for that is that this is not a calculation field. If this would have been a calculation field, it would have been filled in already. But this is an auto enter calculation. That's going to auto enter the calculation as soon as something gets changed uh, somewhere here. So if we change something here, let's take away the S. If we click outside here, then this calculation will be evaluated. It's filled in, stored as text. And as soon as I make another change here, let's see what happens. I'm going to add my S back. And if I click outside, I can see my S has not been added here. There is a little problem and the problem is here. If you go to file manage database and we go into the settings of this field, we see this checkbox and this checkbox says, do not replace the existing value of this field if there is a value in there. And that's the problem because I do not want to do this. I do want to replace the existing value if I change any one of the fields in my calculation. So if I add this S, this S was gone. If I add it back, now we see that this field does update and any change that I make is updated in here, which is cool. So this one is always going to be correct because either one of these, if they get changed, this will be updated. But this is stored as a text, so it does not ever have to recalculate and it doesn't slow your system down. I like that system. It's kind of cool. So now this solves the problem that I was having here where I want to have a drop down. And I want to show both the number and the text. So I'm going to have to edit my drop down right here. Uh, let's see, this is a drop down list. And I'm going to edit this one. And I'm going to say that in my second field, I don't want the name, but I want that calculation field. Okay. Now, if we try this one out, we will see that 
um, now the number does show up and I can see that this one is in the 400 so this is not really correct now there's a second problem that I've got going on here what I normally like to do is I like to put my original tables in table view with this one I didn't do that if I put this one in table view now then I'm gonna see that if I go in here this automatically already becomes a drop down I don't like this I think this is kind of annoying so what I'm gonna do is let's undo this really quick Let's take this one, oops, control Z, let's just make this one an edit box so that we can keep uh, this one in table view and we're going to just quickly make a new layout for this, these divisions. So lay divisions. The problem with changing all these, to make like making drop downs and stuff like that on a layout is that if you go into table view these things will kind of get in the way of you seeing the actual data that you have in an actual field so what I'm gonna do quickly to organize this stuff is I'm gonna go to file manage layouts I'm gonna make a new folder tables and then I'm gonna make another table or another folder for layouts So these guys get to be in table view, so they get to go in here, and the, this guy is a layout, so this one gets to go in here, and now it's kind of clean and organized. If I want to see my actual data that's actually in my fields, I can see that here. It's not bothered by any kind of drop downs or check boxes or anything like that that can obscure your data, and this one is going to be for like user data entry. So let's start and work with this one. Let's use my field picker to add my fields back, and I would like to take these fields and drop them down in here. As we were doing just now, this one was a drop down, so let's create a drop down again for my classes. And let's make it a bit bigger, so like what we had just now. This is a four, uh, 500 class, so I don't want, uh, this is not correct. I don't want to um, relate to these two guys. But the problem that I have now is, now that I've created this new division, and my class doesn't exist yet, I now have to create this new class. Um, and I could do that by going to this classes layout, but then I'm constantly going back and forth between um, my layouts and I don't really want to do that. So I want to have uh, the ability to create a new class directly from here. There is another problem, if I would select this one, then what shows up is just a simple number and that's useless to me, so I don't want that. So I'm going to solve these two problems very simply. Let's go to File, Manage, Database and let's have a look in our relationships graph. Because we do have our class and we do have our, our divisions, but they're not yet related to each other. The class is here and the class ID is here, so let's make a relationship between the two of them and that is going to look a little bit better. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin them around because this makes a little bit more sense. Because what I'm doing is I've got my layout based on my divisions and this class is kind of related to that. Okay, if I do that, that solves one problem. What I can do is I can just kind of alt drag this field over here. And then I can say, give me from my class, which is a related table. Now you can see that these are related tables and these are unrelated. My class is now related, so I can get the C full name of my class. I'm going to not create a label because if I do this, I get to see whichever one I select, 500 natural sciences, it shows up in here. Only problem is now this has become a drop down as well. So that's kind of not the idea. Also, I don't want to see this ID and I don't want these guys in two different fields. So I'm going to use the trick that I often use is I'm going to put these two on top of each other. But before that, I need to make a few changes. First of all, this name field is not going to be a drop down, but an edit box. And I don't want to go in there. I don't want to browse in there, but I do want to find in there. If I want to find a, a class by its name, I want to be able to find it in the name field, but the number field is only going to be for the drop down so that's going to be available in browse mode but I'm not going to find in that one now if I select the two of them I can go to position align like this and now if I exit my layout what I can see is natural sciences and it shows up here I don't have to worry about the ID because I don't see it and this is kind of clean and this is kind of neat now I still have the same problem that I had before this linguistic, the, these linguistics, they don't belong in the natural sciences. I need to have the ability to create a new class. 
I don't only want to create a new class, I also need to enter the class number and the class name. So, because this table is now related, that becomes actually very simple. I can just take my field tool right here and I can say, give me from the class field my class number. And actually, I want to have a label. So, let's double click this one and create label. Let's put the label up top. Let's use these two A's to get my formatting bar so I can line this up like so. And then I can select the two of them and align them nicely. And this one needs a space. Okay, cool. And let's take the two of them. Let's alt drag them on the Mac this way. Let's double click this one and let's say give me the class name. So that's kind of cool. That's an improvement. Let's have a look. Um, so I've got my linguistics. They do not belong in natural sciences. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this so that nothing is selected. And now I can just actually I can't do anything. The reason for that is if I go to File Manage Database, there is something in this relationship setting that I have to change. What I need to do is I'm, I'm on my divisions layout and from this side I need to be able to create records in here and that's the first option you find here which is allow the creation of records in this table via this relationship. Now there's another checkbox here that says delete related records in this table when a record is deleted in the other table. That means if I delete a division, do I also want to delete that related class? Absolutely not in this case because one class can have multiple divisions and it's not because I delete one division that I want to delete the entire class. So we're not going to check this one. Okay, let's try this again. Class number, this is in the 410. So that belongs with 400 language. Okay. Cool. This is related now and if I go in my drop, box, drop down here, then I can see that I actually, actually have two options now. And if I go and look in my table classes, then I've got these two uh, classes now. This new one has just been added and the calculation has been done. So all of that works kind of flawlessly. Okay, so this is a great first step. I can make my classes, I can make my divisions. But we had a third level. That third level is going to be a, the sections level. So let's go into the tables here. Um, let's take this one and let's copy and paste it. This one's going to be sections. Let's change that and let's double click here. ID is good. This can be section number. Let's change this. This can be section name. Then what are we going to have as well? This one is going to be a class IDFK. Sure, that can stay. Um, there's one thing missing I've noticed here in my class. I did make a full name for my class. So let's copy this one. Let's bring it both to divisions. Let's paste it in here because I'm going to want that for this one as well. And I'm going to do the division number and the division name. So that's kind of cool. And then when I have that here, I can also copy it to my sections and paste it in here because I might need this one here later on. Let's go in here. Let's specify that I want the section number and the section name to show up in here. Okay, so this is looking kind of cool. For my sections, I have an ID, section number, section name. These have a full name. I already have a class ID, but if we think ahead, there's going to be another one that I'm going to need here. Every section is in a class, but also in a division. So I'm going to have to add division ID FK as well. So we can organize these a little bit. OK, so that's kind of cool. So what I can do now is I have my sections here as well. This can also be in table view. And if we do that, then we can go to file manage layouts to get this section in my tables here. And then I'm going to make a new layout for my sections. So I'm going to edit this layout. I'm going to say make me a new layout based on sections. I'm going to call this one lay sections. This is going to be on my computer, a form. And if I finish this one, then I can use my field picker to just add a bunch of stuff here. 
Now, what do I want? I want my section number and my section name because I want to be able to enter those. Then I want to be able to select a class and a division. I don't need to see this full name. This is not for on my layout. So let's put these fields on here and maybe let's just make a little bit of room here so that we can kind of separate these guys out. Okay. So again, I've got a section. What section might I have? I might have 411 writing systems. This belongs to a certain class. So we're going to do what we've done before. We're going to make this a drop down list. And this drop down list is going to have the values from classes. That's kind of cool. I'm going to make this one a bit bigger, like so. I'm going to Alt drag to copy this one. And I'm going to say from. Well, there is no related table. That's kind of a problem. Let's cancel this and let's go and have a look what's going on here. File manage database. So I have my divisions and my class here. But my sections doesn't have anything that's related here yet. So what I could do is I can put this one here and I could say like I want to relate my class here, but my class has already been related to my divisions. That's kind of annoying. So what I can do is put them like this because I have a layout based on divisions and a layout based on sections. And I can take this class and I can say, make me a copy by alt dragging it. Or I could use these two pluses. And I could actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this one a color and this one as well so that I know that these are the same. And then I'm going to call this one class sections. So then I can say that this class is uh, related to the class ID is related to class ID. And then my di divisions here, I'm going to give this one a color too. I need this one too. So I'm going to alt drag this one over here. And I'm going to say that division ID of K is related to this ID. And this is going to be divisions section. Cool. Okay, so now I have my classes and my divisions both related. So now I can do this alt drag from class sections. I want the full name. I don't want a label for this. And again, that trick that I always do, this is going to be a drop down available in browse, but not in find mode. And this is going to be a, a not a drop down, but an edit box available, not in browse, but in find mode. Let's select the both of them and line them up left and top. Let's have a look. I've got language and that shows up here and I've got natural sciences. That's kind of cool. I'm going to change this label here so that it kind of is correct. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Uh, 411 writing system is under a language. That's cool. Now, when I select a class, I have the possibilities of all different classes. But when I want to select the division, I would like to um, be able to only see the divisions that are in that certain class. Um, now, let's have a look. Um, I've only got one, but that's okay. Um, how do I do this? Basically, what I'm going to do is this class is if you look at the ID, this is class number two. Um, do I have any divisions that are in class number two? Actually, yes, I do. I've got one division here that's in class number two. So I need to be able to see like, for instance, if I make another division, and let's say that I make a division like um, 820, that would be English and Old English. Literatures. Um, and they would be related to, I should probably be doing this on my layout divisions. 820 would be related to 800, which I don't have here. 820 is underneath 800. Literature, let's just call it literature. It's literature and rhetoric, but okay. So now when I select a class from here, and this is class number two, I want to see only the divisions that are actually in class number two. So um, if I would do a find here for class number two, then I would get only this division linguistics. Now we can't do a find 
uh, for our drop down but we're going to use a relationship and that's going to be uh, essentially doing the same thing we're going to go to file manage database and what we have here in our sections is we select a class and then we want to see only the divisions from that class now our divisions also has a class field in it so we have a class field here and a class field in our divisions we want to select a certain division so what we're going to do is we're going to alt drag this one here we're going to double click this one and we're going to say that this is the divisions section conditional value list so let's change that name so it's kind of clear we're going to expand by clicking here and then we're going to say we want whichever class i have selected here the divisions from that same class are the ones that i want to see so that makes it very clear how this relationship between these two is going to be very simple um, the same fields in both tables Okay, now what we can do is make the drop down for this one. And we're going to go to data drop down lists and make a new one. And we're going to say, make me a drop down for divisions. Actually, first of all, let's do simple divisions ID and full name. If we would do this one, then we can see that um, we see, for instance, 820. That's good. Whichever, divi which other divisions did I have? Uh, uh, uh. So, oh. let's see. I have two divisions, but do they both have their calculation field already filled in? Let's have a look. No, this one doesn't, so let's quickly update this one. Linguistic, linguistics, cool. Always very important if you use these kinds of auto enter calculations to check that these things have been filled in. Now, I don't know if I said this already, but if we, um, if you happen to have a bunch of records already filled in and you only create this full name auto enter calculation field afterwards, it's very easy to fill this in by going to file manage database to fields to just quickly copy this calculation command copy and if you copy that one then you can very simply use a records replace field contents replace with calculated results to just quickly um, replace the values in every single um, record in this field so that way you can quickly uh, fix fix it if these things would not have been filled in um, okay so if I have my simple drop down for the divisions then I'm gonna see all the different divisions but if I make a drop down that is more of a conditional value list then let's make a new one divisions conditional value list then I'm gonna have to make a few changes here and what I want is not from the simple divisions table but from the divisions section conditional value list I want to get the ID of the division and I want to also display the full name and I'm not gonna include all the values because that's kind of the trick right here I'm gonna include only the related values starting from my sections because that's where we are where we are our uh, layout is based on the sections table so i want to see only the related values which are the uh, divisions with the same class again i'm going to sh i'm going to show only values from the second field because i don't want to see that id now let's try this out now if this has changed let's exit our layout so i've got my class selected and if i select this one here then I get only the linguistics because those are the only divisions in this class. If I select another class like literature, then I get only the divisions that are in that class right here. So that's kind of cool. A few more changes we need to make here, like this one, division. Then I can make this one a little longer and do that trick that I always do. I wanna alt drag this one over here I want to see the divisions and the divisions that are related to my section so that's very important that you select the correct table occurrence because as soon as you start to get more uh, table occurrences this can all start to become a little bit more confusing so this one is going to be an edit box not in browse but in find mode this one is going to be in browse but not in find mode and this is going to be a drop down list let's put them on top of each other like so and then let's have a look how does this look I can select something and it shows up and if I select another one here 
then uh, here uh, this kind of shows up like so okay one thing that's kind of important to note is that you do have to be careful because if you accidentally select let's say for instance you go into the 800 and you select something here if you go back into the 400 and you forget to select something else here then you've got a class in the 400 a division in the 800 and that's kind of weird but you can fix that if you want by using some sort of a script trigger that empties this field as soon as you select something new here uh, that's just a tiny little trick I'll just quickly show that to you oops like so oh wow this is a bit big let's make it smaller okay so this is my script workspace it's empty now because there's nothing in there and we're gonna make a new script and the script that we're gonna make is let's call it empty selected division and we're gonna simply do set field we're gonna say the division IDFK field we're gonna specify one of these and then because we've just selected a a new class we do want to go back to this field so let's do a let's hit return and let's do a go to field and then let's select the target field is going to be division idfk okay let's hit a command s to save this script let's close this one let's drag this one out of the way for a second we're going to go and set a script trigger on the object on object modify event and we're going to select as a script that one script we just created if you do that you will see that a little red asterisk appears here and that way you know that that field has a script trigger associated with it so now if I have the something here selected I can just select something else here and that script trigger will, will kind of clear out this field and give me the ability to select something new now there is nothing in the 500 range yet let's go to the 800 yes I can now select 800 here if I select 400 again here then this one gets cleared and I get my new drop down with options so that kind of helps you to make sure that you don't make any mistakes right here now we had something cool on this previous layout on our layout of divisions now the ability to create uh, new classes which is kind of cool so let's see if we can add that ability on this layout as well so let's add our class number from class sections class number and we do want to have a label so let's create a label let's line this up like so let's put it down a bit so class number that's kind of cool let's alt drag this over to the side uh, class name okay so if we have a new record and we want to create for instance something like um, let's see what else exists 861 that would be Spanish poetry and then that's gonna be in my class of 860 which is in the 800 actually oh, that is actually not smart because I already had that one let's do another one in the 900s or something 952 that would be Japan and then the class I don't have anything in the 900 so then I can uh, make something new again same problem as what we had before I have to specify that from this section I am able to create new records in the classes table and I might as well I'll do that later so 900 um, would be geography and history so that's kind of cool now we don't have anything in the um, divisions here now there is one thing we do have to kind of be careful with because I could make this same system for the divisions the only problem is 
that if I would create a new division from here, that division would not be uh, immediately related to this class. Let's try that out. Let's I'll, instead of just saying it, I'll prove it to you. Okay, so let's change this one into divisions section, division number, divisions section, division name. And I have to change these as well. I might as well just, um, just write number and name, then I don't have to change this. Okay, so let's say if I want to change something here, and again, file manage database, change that relationship. Um, Let's edit this one here. Let's allow the, the creation of records. What you can see right now is um, there is a relationship between the division ID of K field and the ID field here. So that means that, um, well, actually, that doesn't really mean anything yet. Let's just quickly fill this one in. Um, Japan is in 952, so 950 would be this one. And that is general history of Asia etc okay so this is kind of cool that I made this only problem is if I now go to my divisions and I look at this last new one that I made it's not related to a class because I basically just made this new record but I haven't really um, told FileMaker that it had to make this relationship as well and I can actually do that very simply, very easily by going to File and Manage Database. And I could just say, instead of making this a single relationship between, um, I can just because I have the class ID here and I have that same class ID here as well, I can just add this relationship, which is really cool. And now if I kind of, I'll just uh, copy this one. Oops, that's not the one I want to copy. Um, because now I can't select this because uh, that relationship is not valid. If I just copy this one, that's the one I want to copy, and I make this 950 again in this layout of my sections, I can just make 950 and I can paste this one. And now what we're going to find in our division layout is that now it has been related to, um, whoops, I'm on the wrong record. Now it has been related to this class because that relationship, that relationship here, that double relationship forces um, for that new record to also get the class ID that I had selected over there. Okay, so lay sections, I'm right here right now. Let's uh, make a new one. Let's do nine, five, Five, which is I run. That's going to be in the 900 class, and that's going to be under the 950. Cool. And if I would select another class, then basically this drop down is kind of giving me the correct divisions that are in that class. Okay, now all of this is really cool, and this really allows me to um, create my um, complete list because if I go into my sections and I modify this one to add, let's see if I go to class sections then I can add my class name and if I go to division section then I can add my division name and if I do this then I can see that this table and all the related information that it contains this basically contains, I apparently have an empty one here, let's get rid of that. But this will, this will become my complete list that contains all the sections and all the classes and divisions that they are related to. So now that I have this one list, if I now want to start putting books in my library, then I can write down for every book in which um, section, division and class it is in. In order to do that, we're going to end up basically with something that's similar to this, but it's going to be one step further because it's going to have two conditional value lists. We're going to make a new um, new table, and that's going to be my books books ta uh, books table, where I enter my book. So every book has a title. 
which is a oops I forgot myself my own ID I always need to create an ID which has an auto enter serial number that's kind of important so title is going to be a text so let's command T to make that a text and then every book is going to be in a class so class IDFK and that's going to be a number every um, book is going to be in a division and that's going to be a number as well division IDFK oops and that's going to have a section IDFK so that's kind of cool let's hit OK let's go and have a look this books can be in table view so then let's go back to file manage layouts so that we can kind of um, put these away where they belong sections go or this layout goes here the books table goes there so let's go and choose any layout let's edit layout and new layout and let's say lay books that's going to show records from my books table it's going to be on my computer and a form and let's finish let's view take our field picker to get uh, some fields on here I don't really care about the books ID I don't really need to use that or see that but I do want to have all the other ones so let's put those here and maybe we need to create a bit of space here okay so it's kind of clear what's what and then I can change all these labels here but that's kind of annoying but that makes it so much prettier okay cool so again very simple I make a new record and in my new record I'm gonna enter a book um, let's say um, Japanese history okay so now this belongs into a certain class like what we did before this is starting to become a little bit repetitive let's do our classes drop down we know this so this is very simple we're gonna alt drag this one up here and then we're gonna choose a related table which we don't have okay so let's cancel this one let's go to file manage database let's go to relationships and let's have a look okay so we have a new one here books and um, I always like to put the ones that I'm gonna base a layout on on this side that does mean we have to do a little bit of scrolling but that's alright let's give this one a color and then this one can have a color too so books what am I going to relate to my books I'm gonna relate a class I'm gonna relate a division um, let's command select and a section so let's alt drag or let's use these two pluses Let's drag all of them over here, shall we? Let's drag them down. Weep. Not too far down because then it floops really fast. And let's rename these things a bit. Let's say class books. And I'm going to get rid of this for a second. Just delete it. Divisions books and sections books. Cool. Um, I've got my class ID that's classes I've got my division that's division it's kind of looking messy but sections sections okay that's kind of cool let's close all of these up so we have classes divisions and sections cool oh so my class ID can be alt dragged over there so now I do have related in here my classes and this one is going to be a edit box in fine but not in browse mode this one is in browse but not in find mode let's line these two up top and left so my Japanese history is going to be in geography and history now the next step is going to be a division so only the divisions from this class and this is going to be again a conditional value list um, let's go down here so I've got my divisions here let's alt drag them over here let's double click divisions books underscore conditional value list and very simple relationship we have already selected a class and we have a class in here extremely simple it doesn't have to be any more difficult than that so let's create a drop down for this one let's make this a drop down field let's do new and let's say 
divisions cv box because we have a cv here already a conditional value list this one is another one divisions books cv that looks good let's use the id but let's also display the full name and then the tricky part here let's include only the related values starting from books because it's in my books table that i'm working and in my books table that i select a class show values only from second field okay 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 let's hope that this works let's have a look i've got only the general history of asia that's kind of good if i would select language then i get only linguistics okay that looks kind of good but it's the 900 so let's select this one this division that's good and then again like what i had before very simple alt drag let's get from divisions books my full name this one is going to be not in browse but in find mode and an edit box and this one is going to be browse but not find mode select two of these line them up that looks kind of good now i need to get a section only from the 950 here so um again a file managed database again we need a, a conditional value list and it's basically the same as what we did here so we're gonna alt drag this one over here rename it sections books underscore cv and then if we open this one up a bit what we have here is we have a class id and a division id and here we have a class id and a division id as well so class id it's related to class id but the section is not only in a class but also in a division so the division id is related to the division id as well again very simple because these are the two values that i have already selected class and division so when i have those selected then on only then can this drop down be made and let's have a look drop down list let's make a new one and let's say for the first time we're going to make someone uh, one for sections sections cv uh, books use values from field sections book cv very simple we're going to use the id of the section and we're going to show the full name of that section as well I'm going to include only the related values from the books table and I'm going to show only values from the second field. Let's try this out, see if it works. I get Japan and Iran, that looks pretty good to me because if I would select literature and then English and old, then I actually get nothing. I probably don't have any data for that. Let's go and quickly make one so we can test this out. What kind of... Um sections would we have here we would have 821 english poetry so let's go to sections yep we have nothing in the 800 range so let's do 821 which is english poetry whoops english poetry and english poetry would be in the oops 800s and the 820s so let's look at our books layout this one now gives us the one i've just created it's of course not correct because i need to be in 900 950 and 952 japan again we still need to fix this last one here so let's make this big alt drag then from sections books we're going to get the full name this one is going to be a edit box available in find not in browse mode and this one is in browse but not in find mode top left and this is looking pretty sweet if i make a new record and i just tab ahead then i can just simply select uh, something here something there and something here so this kind of gives me the ability to very quickly um let's see what can i do Pens. okay so this gives me the ability to quickly enter a title of a book and then just by using the tabs i can just very quickly go through all of these um, drop downs here and they are all kind of filtered 
um, based on what I uh, selected beforehand. Now, uh, as I said before, uh, if you selected a value here and then you go back and you select uh, something different here, then these both need to be emptied, which was what I showed you before with that script trigger. Now, even from this layout, you can create new classes, divisions, and sections, uh, kind of using the tricks that we've done before. So if we just add this one here and we go from class books, we do class number. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name this one number. And then let's make an alt copy. Let's call this one name. And then we can just kind of copy these guys down. And down again. And then very important to remember. Uh, this is section books that we do need to make sure. Section books. Okay, that we go and check these relationships, file manage database, and that we do make sure that, for instance, our divisions uh, are not only related like this, but are also related uh, by the class ID, and that our section is also related using the class ID and the division ID. So that if we create new records there, and I don't think, know if we had already checked this one. No, we do have to allow the creation of records in the sections in the divisions as well and in the classes as well so that if we um, want to make something new let's say um, I don't know what let's say if we have a new one here like what could we possibly have let's look for something in my list let's do 700 700 is the arts then if I want to make something new in here I could say um, 710 civic and landscape arts and then that could be like a 715 woody plants and so now the important thing is that, for instance, um, let's look at my tables. My class that's been created, that's simple. My division has got a related class ID, which is important. And then my section has got a related class ID and a division ID. And these have been gotten through that relationship. So it's very important that all of these get filled in properly. Because otherwise, if I would make a new one, then of course these drop downs would not be working. Now I can see, oops, I can just select one here. Yes, this is working very well. Now I can see that when I select something here, I just foop over there. That's not good. That's not what I want. So I'm going to change the tab order. I'm going to just quickly get rid of these guys here for a second. And I'm going to go to layouts, set tab order. And I want uh, to fill in the title. That's one. Then I want to go down to the class, that's two. But then I don't want to go to any of these because that's kind of not the ID. I want to get to this one. This is going to be number three. This one's going to be number four. And then whatever you want to do here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's fine. These, I don't ever have to go in there. So these can just be emptied. Cool. So I'm going to get these guys back on their place. And now I should be pretty much done. I can do uh, whatever I want here. I can fill in the title of my book. I can select the classes, divisions, and sections, and I can make new ones. And when I make new ones, they are all automatically related the way they should be. Um, there. I think this was probably kind of an interesting exercise. And I hope you guys learned something.
If you want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can always go to my Udemy page where I've got a few FileMaker courses that are far more detailed than these short videos that I make on YouTube. For instance, there is a FileMaker beginner tutorial uh, where we make a context database and this one is free so you can follow it wherever you want. And basically in this one we make a simple contacts database which shows you all the basics of how to make layouts and lists and menus etc um, in FileMaker. Then we build on to that one to make a complete FileMaker invoice database which shows you an invoice structure that basically every single company uses. It allows you to make quotes and invoices to track your products and your inventory and it allows you to make all kinds of reports and graphs and stuff like that to track all of your income and stuff like that and then I've got a FileMaker booking and reservation system which is really cool and shows you a lot of cool tricks and techniques to um, book and reserve items in a company where you do stuff like if you have a hotel or a car or equipment rental or something like that this uh, course is a really interesting one for those kinds of situations so head over there by following the links in the description to learn a ton more about FileMaker